Hey everyone, this is a very brief overview of the Scale Workshop app. It allows you to design and play your own microtonal scales. You can also tune various other synthesizers with it. It's just reached version 1.0 and is now recommended for use by the wider musician and hobbyist community. To use the app, just go to servish.com slash scale workshop and it will load in your browser. Now I'm going to show you a few things that it can do. Let's say you've been uh, listening to some microtonal music online and you heard a piece of music you really liked and you found it was 22 tone equal temperament. And you think, well, I want to try 22 tone equal temperament as well. How can I do that? So here's how it's done. You just click new. This is going to be 22 tone equal temperament. So we select equal temperament. This will be 22 divisions of the octave. So the number of divisions is 22. And the interval to divide, we want this to be an octave. It says two over one, so what does that mean? Well, two over one is by definition an octave. You could just take my word for it. So you can just leave this as two over one. That means 22 equal divisions of the octave. We're gonna click okay, and suddenly lots of interesting stuff has just happened. So you'll be thinking, how can I hear this scale that I've just created in Scale Workshop? First, if I have a MIDI keyboard device connected, Scale Workshop will pick that up. I can play my MIDI keyboard and I will hear the scale. I could use my QWERTY keyboard instead. As I press buttons on the QWERTY keyboard, we can hear the effect there. Now, as I press the A button, I'm hearing my bass MIDI note that I have selected in Scale Workshop, which in this case is a 440 hertz tone. As I go to the right, so I press A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, you can hear that it's going up by a single step. But if I go the other axis, A, Q, one. These are separated by five steps. So you can think of the QWERTY keyboard in Scale Workshop quite like a uh, like a guitar, where the horizontal rows are like playing frets on a guitar string. So for example, if I start from Z, A, Q, and one. The other way to hear your scale is by using the touch keyboard. If you have a phone or a tablet, you can make your own scales while sitting on the bus or the train. So here's another scenario that you might use Scale Workshop for. Let's say you've gone online and you've found a very large zip file that contains over 4,000 Scala tuning files. And you really want to experiment with these files that you've downloaded. However, these are Scala files and your synthesizers are, let's say, Omnisphere and Serum. And these don't support Scala files. They can only read Anamark Tune files. So you need to convert those. First, you'd click New, and then you can import a Scala file or a Tune file. In this case, it's a Scala file. You select your file that you want to input, and then you click Open. And there you can see all the data has automatically been imported into Scale Workshop. I can now hear the scale if I play my QWERTY keys. That sounds pretty good, so I want to export this as a tune file. All I have to do is click export, download Animark tuning. It's already filled the name out for me. When I click save, I now have that file as a tune file. Scale Workshop can be used to tune many synthesizers. Let's have a look at some of those now. So here's an incomplete list of the supported synths. Uh, first, we have those that are retuned by Animark tune files. Uh, this includes most of your Linplug synths, Omnisphere, as I already mentioned. Uh, there's my favorite sampler there and the rest of the towel line. There's Heckman's synths. Many of those support microtuning as well. And then Serum, it's very popular these days. So any of these are retuned by the tune file method. We also have many synths which support Scala files. These include many by Applied Acoustics. These are very good physical modeling synths. A piano tech is another good physical modeling piano. Any of the synths which are built with the ARIA engine also support Scala file import. So that includes GPO4 and the Plog synths. You've also got some options such as Zinfusion, Zidab Sub FX, which are open source synths that support Scala files. Uh, Synth V1, Sample V1, Pad V1 are also in the same category, as well as AmSynth. Uh, ImageLine Harmore is, I believe, packaged with FL Studio. 
there's a lot of options there. And then aside from those formats, you can also create a max MSP call text file. This file can be loaded into the call object and then that call object will behave much like a MIDI to frequency object, except that it has your own tuning inside of it. And then pure data can do much the same thing, except you use the text object rather than the MIDI to frequency object. This behaves quite like the call object. You export your file from Scale Workshop and then you load it into the text object and then it will work much like a microtonal MIDI to frequency object. And finally, contact. With contact instruments, most of them will allow you to add your own script to extend the instrument so you can do more with them. All you need to do is load the script into the contact script editor or copy and paste the contents of that text file into the contact script editor. And then when you play the instrument, you'll hear your own tuning. Okay, what else might we want to do with this software? Scale Workshop gives you a small selection of synth settings. For example, I can enable a delay. I have a small selection of waveforms and also a selection of amplitude envelopes. There are also a number of ways to modify your scale. I won't discuss those today, but have fun experimenting with these. And if you need a hand understanding any of this stuff, the user guide has been added just to provide a little more information. So I hope this will be a lot of fun for you to experiment with. If you want to use Scale Workshop, just point your browser to sevish.com slash scale workshop.